Do you want to write a book in 2024? Or do you want to finish the project that you've been working on for more than 10 years? No matter what, if you have writing dreams about becoming a writer, then it's a good thing to set up goals, achievable goals. And in this video, I want to talk about how you can accomplish your writing goals in 2024. A little bit of background about me. My name is Natalie. I'm an author and a growth marketer. I've been writing for quite a, quite a long time, and uh, and I've actually I actually. Six months ago, I decided to take some time off work and go back to university to take some writing courses and focus on my writing for one year. I call this my year of writing and, uh, you know, I'm halfway through and I've learned quite a bit during this time. And that is why, you know, I set up a really high goal for myself and I wanted to share some of my learnings and you know my best advice on how to achieve your goals but also you know some of the pitfalls that you should avoid falling into so the first step when it comes to you know how to achieve your writing goals for 2024 is to actually think about what you want to achieve so what do you want to achieve in 2024 maybe you want to finish a novel or write a novel from start to finish but like a pitfall here is usually we tend to set up really, really high goals for ourselves. Like I'm going to write three books and I'm going to be published and everything's going to happen within a year. Well, if you're going with a traditional publisher, then, you know, there's no way that your book is going to, you know, if you finish it in 2024, it's not going to be published in 2024. You might be able to publish it if you go the indie way, of course, um, but there's... Like when your novel is finished, finished, when it's ready to send to publishers or to go into printing, there's still a lot of work to be done. So remember that. Try to set realistic goals. Don't compare yourself to others. Like some people seem to be able to publish a book every six months. Um, but if that's not you, then that's fine. Like don't, don't compare yourself to others. Start with yourself. And I think the best way to think about what you want to achieve in a year is to actually try and look at the big picture. Yeah, tip number two, think about the big picture. What do you want with your writing? Is your goal to publish a few books and, you know, have it as a side hustle because you love writing? Or is your goal to become a full-time author and write 20 or 30 or 60 books? Well, depending on your answer here, then, then there are, you know, the approach is a little bit different. Because if you want to write a lot, lot, lot of books, then it doesn't really matter. Whatever you want to do, when you have your big picture goal, then try to break it down and think, what can I do this year that is realistic? You know, it has to fit in with your work-life balance or work-student balance. Um, but what can I do this year to get a few steps closer to the goal or the dream that I have of maybe becoming a full-time author? Um, and if, if you're not published, then the first step is of course to get a book deal maybe, or, you know, to finish a novel Th that's the perfect goal for 2024. Or, you know, if you have more time or if you're a more experienced writer and you write a lot more, then maybe your goal is to finish, you know, all the drafts for uh, a series that you're writing so that you can publish them very closely together in 2025. I don't know. You have to think about this, but depending on your goal, try to set realistic goals for this year. And when it comes to my own goals, I actually did a video about this uh, last week, so you can check it out. I will link it in bio. But since I write full time right now, I can set quite high goals. Uh, I could not write as much, of course, when I was working full time because, you know, <laughs> no time. But uh, right now I am uh, at a time in my life when I can do that. And tip number three is uh, when you set up the goals for 2024, try to count backwards. Like try to break the big goal down into smaller chunks. Um, I think this is really important because this will actually prevent us from setting too high goals. So let's say you want to finish a romance novel that you've been thinking about and you haven't written anything on it. So let's say the romance novel will roughly end up um, being 100,000 words long. Okay, well, first of all, before you start writing, you will probably need to 
do some kind of outline. And let's say that that will take you 15 days. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk in days now. And uh, of course, you can do this. Maybe you can only write in the weekends or whatever. Then think in weeks. But for uh, for this example, I will say in days because it's a lot easier with the math. Um, but yeah, let's say, it, you know, you will... You will do a rough outline in 15 days. And after that, um, let's say that you're able to write half an hour per day. Um, that is that is a realistic goal for you. Then maybe your, you know, the word goal for the first draft is for you to write 500 words per day or 3,500 words per week. Well, if that is achievable for you, then it will take you 200 days to finish your first draft. And before you start editing, it's always healthy to have a break, you know, between writing your draft and uh, rereading it and start reiterating it. So let's say you have a break from it for 15 days. After this, then you have uh, 122 days to you know, revise it and edit it. Maybe you will send it to an editor or uh, have it have uh, beta readers or whatever. But as you can tell, one year, if you write half an hour per day, you know, it goes by so fast because carving out the time to write, uh, since most of us aren't, we're not full-time writers, we're not, we're doing this, most, you know, everyone around us sees this as a hobby, is usually quite hard to squeeze it into our schedules. Um, so that is why I'm telling you to set realistic goals. No matter if you work or if you're a student or if you are you have a family, you know, these are things that you will have to prioritize as well, but don't forget to prioritize your writing. Um, but yeah, you will have to set realistic goals. So yeah, that is one example of how long it can take. If you, if you have the possibility to write more on weekends or whatever, then that's great. But still be realistic when you set these goals. And also, you know, make micro goals. When you've finished your first draft, then, you know, maybe it's the first revision, then it's the second revision. Or you, your next goal is to send it to your editor and then you revise it again. And then you send it to your beta, beta readers or whatever. Um, but to be able to do this, so tip number four, um, to be able to do all this, I think one of the most important thing is to develop some sort of system or, you know, create habits that support your writing. I, I love the book Atomic Habits. I've talked a lot about it on this channel and I've actually made a book review. Link will be in the description box. Um, but that book really, really helped me when it came to creating you know, a healthy writing habit. So you should ask yourself, what do I need to be able to, if your goal is to write every day, then what do I need to be able to write every day? But well, for me, I've actually, you know, blocked time in my calendar for writing every day. And for me, writing is a non-negotiable. I will do it every day, even on Christmas, even on my birthday. And, um, and yeah, if I have to move, you know, I can move the writing slot. I don't have to do it in the mornings, even if that is what I prefer. But yeah, it's a non-negotiable. So I, for me, it's a have to, I have to do it. And um, that is how I am able to write every day because I don't give myself permission to cheat on that one. And another habit that I have that really, really helps when it comes to writing and when it comes to focusing on things that I want to focus on. It is uh, meditation and, you know, going to the gym. For me, those two really help me focus. They help me relax. And like when I'm not thinking about the uh, manuscript I'm working on, like when I'm at the gym, that is usually when I get these breakthroughs, like ideas. And I'm like, oh, that is how I should solve this problem in my manuscript. So I need those pauses to be able to... Um, have a happy and healthy, you know, writing life. And I want you guys to think what you need to be able to do this. And another thing that I do is that I make sure to batch create content for my social platforms. So I batch film videos for YouTube. I batch create content for my website and for my social media. Because this helps me 
not to feel the stress of having to create every day or like always being on a deadline. And when I have those things out of the way, I can focus on my writing. And last but not least, I already talked about this, but of course, break down all my big goals into smaller chunks. And then when I achieve those mini goals, I make sure to celebrate and, you know, be happy about the small wins. I also tend to track my my writing. So I track how much I write, you know, how long I write for every day, but I also track how many words I write, uh, especially during during the first drafts. And this really, for me, like numbers, they do motivate me. So I can go back and see, oh my God, I wrote 60,000 words in November, or I wrote these many words in December. It's just a way for me to motivate myself and to see that I actually move forward because writing is yes. writing is like preparing for a marathon. It's small, small steps in the right direction, but they're so small that you can't see them until you have the finished book in your hand. And tip number five is to have an accountability partner or to have some, you know, set deadlines for yourself. For me, deadlines really help. I That is why, you know, I booked an editor now that I started editing. So I know that I have to be finished editing at a certain date. But yeah, that this depends what kind of person you are. An accountability partner might be better. Maybe you have a friend that you can, you know, you switch drafts with and give each other feedback or stuff like that. And last but not least, an advice for you is to experiment a little bit with your writing routine. Because, because if you find your the best way for you to write, that will really help. Um, and I've been doing this by trying different famous authors' writing routines. You don't have to do that. You can just, you know, do some small uh, experiments yourself. But like, do you prefer uh, writing your first draft by hand or talking to your phone? Or do you want to sit in front of a computer? I don't know. How, do you know? Have you tried the different kinds of writing? Or if you want to be more creative, then read Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way. And to conclude this episode, I think, you know, the most important thing is for you to try to break it down so that writing isn't just, I want a finished book in my hand. Try to enjoy the journey. Like, if you want to become a writer in the long run, then you should enjoy writing. And hopefully you will, you know, you will create a writing some kind of writing life where you write regularly because if you write regularly then you are a writer already and you will probably become a published author because if we practice something and if we do it again and again and again and again we will become really good at it so and if you haven't read Atomic Habits read it it's amazing for building a better life I guess but yeah those are my top advice on how to accomplish your writing goals in 2024 are there any other like tips that you guys want to share please uh, share them in the comments and let me know what you want to hear more about on this channel i can't wait to talk more to you next year have a happy new year and if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this bye